Okay, urgent real time Bitcoin forecast. And uh, this is a um, alpha edition. In other words, I'm going to actually give you some professional, high level, quant level uh, trading secrets that uh, I don't use as much, but I still need to look at. Uh, what When I make a determination on whether Bitcoin's going to go up or down or altcoins are going to go up or down, <clears throat> I use uh, much more precise and intricate tools so that we can do 300x and 500x leverage. But I still need to do this part. And this part is already online. It's, it's already on the internet, except very few people understand uh, the easier stuff. So with this part, with this much, you could do 3x leverage. But that's good enough to know bigger picture direction. So you start with 3x leverage and then you look for exact timing where right now um, we can do 300x. So, um, so, so let's start with this. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to do three different types of divergences. Uh, I'm on my big, huge bean bag here uh, in front of my desk, as you can see. This is the desk you're all familiar with, right? So uh, here I am. Um, everyone knows the RSI divergence. So let's do this first. RSI divergence. What does RSI divergence say? Well, what you want to look at is something really, really close within like Within 10 candles, within 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 15 candles, you don't want to look at something that's like 40, 50 candles away. And the, the most um, effective real-time use, usable uh, hour is the hourly. Here, let me turn this into red. Because what ends up happening, if you go for the 4-hour or some other bigger, like daily divergence, you literally have to wait for a whole day or two. A, for a daily divergence, if this was set to one day, uh, you'd literally have to wait um, two or three days until something changed and until you actually hit target. So you could, uh, you won't, you wouldn't get le le uh, liquidated at three x leverage. It'd be hard to get liquidated at three x leverage. But who wants to wait a whole like three days uh, by using the daily candles? Same thing with the four hour candles. If you use the four hour candles, you have to wait uh, anywhere from three to four times that period of time. So if you're using a four hour candle, you might have to wait 12 hours or 16 hours before the divergence actually took effect. And if it was a bullish divergence, candles would start going up 18 hours later or something like that, 16, 12 hours later. So that's, that's why I use the hourly because with the hourly, there's a much narrower window uh, chance that something will, will change and go wrong and invalidate. And you can make a trade within the next two or three hours, which is awesome. We're, so we're just going to stay with the uh, hourly for now. And I'm going to show you. Uh, let's take a look at this. If you uh, here, I'm going to get rid of this. Let's just zoom into here. This is the uh, this is Bitcoin price uh, right now. What you, what you, the way to do this is to stretch this really wide so that you can uh, see the uh, see the difference between the candles that are really, really close by. And remember, like I said, you want to count anywhere from uh, 8, 10, 15, 20 candles on the hourly total. You don't want to do like 50 candles, like I said. So if you look, notice here, price for this bottom is lower than price for this uh, bottom. Uh, and this corresponds to here and here. So this is a divergence. We have a bullish divergence. It's different. This candle, the price refuses to go lower, even though uh, strength is much lower the price refuses to go lower. So, so this is one divergence. So what, what I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to label it uh, with this. So we have one bullish divergence and this is going to be green and it's going to be thick. Okay. And the same goes for, uh, let's see here, down here. Bam. Green bullish divergence. Yay. Okay. So that's one. Now we want to uh, look for another one. Uh, we want to, we want to find as many as possible within about ten to twelve uh, candles. Now, if you look at this particular moment in time, oh, interesting! You see what I'm seeing here? This is also uh, the price couple out like a day ago was lower than the uh, price right now, and yet, and yet, if you look at the RSI. It's higher. So we have a double divergence. Uh, double divergence generally means uh, this is like pretty solid. Now, 
this this isn't 100 guaranteed to pump right now because uh what whales do uh like for instance if there's a january 10th deadline which is tomorrow uh they're going to look at this divergence and go holy shit there's going to be a lot of people buying this is exit liquidity time let's just destroy this thing and uh dump and we'll short at the same time to add pressure and gain more profit um multiplicative profit so whales can especially if there's some kind of weird deadline going on so you don't want to be using rsi as a trading method when there's a deadline because whales remember whales have so much money they can't just buy and sell all at once they buy they bought at the bottom and they have to sell over time they have to sell over three four five six uh sets of high volume high uh retail FOMO whenever the retail FOMO is that's when the whales dump and they haven't even dumped it all they're just they still have they're still like oh shit we still didn't sell at all we we destroyed millions of lives and we still have more to sell is is their position uh so technically we're, we're bullish here from the RSI perspective we I wouldn't go much farther than 15 to 17 maybe even 21 uh candles back but just for grins and giggles let's try it this is much lower than current price. Let's see if you look here. And I'm, just, I'm not going to do it with this one. I'll just do it with a temporary marker. This, if you compare this price to this price, it's lower. But if you compare, I think this is this here. This price to this price, it's the same angle. There is no divergence, you see. So this is, this is only a double divergence. Uh, and we're going to label it. Okay, thank you, double divergence. And move on to the next. Uh, accumulation distribution uh, this is really good because RSI doesn't consider volume but uh, act this does accumulation distribution so let me tell you how accumulation distribution works I love these indicators that consider volume because volume in and of itself you can't um, it's hourly volume you can see the candles but as you can see there's I don't have uh, I don't have the um, Volume candles down here. Number one, the volume candles get in the way of my uh, trend lines and my uh, pattern recognition. So they just get in the way. So I don't have them. I don't use them. And you don't need to because you have these awesome tools, accumulation distribution and OBV. So uh, let's continue on. Now, uh, RSI did not consider volume. Accumulation distribution and OBV does. So we're going to use both to uh, consider volume. Uh, let's, we don't need this, this fat. So let's do this so you can see the chart better. Okay. Notice what's happening here. No, I don't notice. Of course not. Um, look, let's look for some, let's look for some big events. Okay. This was a big event. Um, this was a big event going up, right? This whole thing. Let's see. This entire upward climb was a big event um uh, so was this 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 was a big event but let's see if we could sell let's see if there was some kind of uh indication in in the corresponding time frames uh here here uh here here uh, let's see here here and here here so we're looking for corresponding 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 uh indications um calculations that we can uh, we can bank on. Uh, okay. And I'm, I'm looking beyond uh, my tablet here that I'm recording on because I'm, I've got more monitors on the other side of my office. I don't know if you've noticed, but I've got like several different offices, so they all look a little different. Um, okay. Let's look here. Um, here, you can see that volume is going up. This is... Oh, Okay, here. Look. Volume was going up, constant trending upwards, but your price was kind of zigzagging lower. Here's a lower high. See that? Oops. Uh, this is a lower high. This is a higher high, lower high. This is a lower high, higher high. So this is the opposite. You see how these this is a divergence here? And guess what happened? Because of this divergence here. What happened dump we dumped right here but this is a tiny little dump see that notice how this um 
low point here. I don't know if you can see it very well on this um, at this resolution, but this low point it's not really that low compared to this. It's about it's about at the same level of this. So so basically what I'm saying is a price here went really low. But accumulation distribution, the amount of volume didn't drop that much. The amount of volume multiplied by the price. This thing, what this thing does is takes volume multiplied by price. So if price dropped this much, you would think that when you multiply it against volume, that the volume um, line should have dropped a lot lower, but it didn't. It just kind of went blip. It didn't even drop much at all. So what does that mean? Uh, that means that whales aren't selling. What this means is basically whoever sold here, they just sold into a bunch of no orders. There's just not many orders here. So that's why the volume didn't go much lower because there wasn't that many people trying to buy here. So you fell into support and because uh, the distribution, the accumulation kept on progressing upwards, upward, 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 more, 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 then price eventually does have to keep going up and follow, following together. So let's look for another divergence that we can, uh, instead of just talking theory, uh, how many minutes do I have here? Uh, I can't even tell. It doesn't even say how many minutes we're on. Uh, let's look for another one. Let's help. You want to see if we can tell that this would have happened? Uh, let's do this. Okay. Here, let's look over here. Price dipped there, right? Um, but if you look at here, let me... Let me increase the resolution, this area here. Price dipped here, but this is actually higher. Let me draw that again. Here it is. This is lower lows, but actually higher lows. What the hell is that? That means that, again, you hit a pocket with very few support orders. Very few support orders, but since the demand, since the volume of the demand didn't change much, of course you're going to go up. So that's how you interpret these things. This is pretty cool, isn't it? So what about right now? What about right now? Ooh, look at that. Ooh okay, let's look at uh, what's happening right now. What's happening right now? Ooh, uh, I might have to stop this recording this and do, uh, do a trade. Yeah. Give me a second. Basically, what's happening right now is that while we have a bullish divergence here, uh, if you look at price, we have lower lows, lower lows, but we have more volume here. But suddenly, look at this. We didn't drop much here. We didn't drop much, but the volume dropped a lot, mul multiplied by volume. So we're losing power really fast. Um, Hmm. I'm looking for one little bounce here. I think it's going to bounce once here so I can get in, get into a short if need be. Uh, so that's how you would tell uh, whether there's a divergence on the accumulation distribution actus. There's, there's no bullish. If you look here, this is higher and this is also higher. So there's no bullish um, divergence on uh, actus for this particular play, for this particular moment. Uh, if you look from here to here, it's the same thing. Uh, it's it's the same angle, so there's no uh, unusual bullishness going on here. Oh, shit. Uh, oh, man. Um, uh, okay, anyway. I gotta finish this video because I started it. I like finishing what I started, even if it's at a slight cost to me. Uh, now, OBV, one of my favorites uh, as well. OBV... Um, OBV, you can actually use it just like, ah, shit. Uh, every time I want to record a YouTube video, there's just not enough time. Like, by the time I get done explaining something, the trade is already gone. Mm. I should, like, just quit my YouTube and quit all my social social media activities and just, just focus on trading. But see, if I did that, it's just so mind-numbing. You literally go insane. It's just literally super mind-numbing to do that. Hmm. Anyway, if you look at OBV, 
first thing you want to do is just treat OBV, instead of looking at OBV uh, for uh, divergences, just treat OBV as if it was a price line. Because it does the same thing. It does the same thing in terms of um, volume. Uh, uh, don't look for divergences. Uh, just treat it like a regular price and uh, with trend lines and shapes and geometrics because it's, it's very linear multiplication. So if you look here, we have a rising broadening wedge and we have a rejection down here. So this is actually bearish. BR. Uh, this is actually bearish uh, on OBV. But let's look for uh, some divergences anyway, since we're on the topic of divergences. Uh, so you would basically, you could, you could do TA with about 3x leverage just based on shapes alone, just based on geometry, without, uh, without any divergence um, uh, uh, metrics at all, without any divergence uh, Calculations at all. Even if you just went on geometrics, uh, OBV is awesome. But if you use OBV with uh, geometrics and divergence, it becomes more powerful. And then if you use OBV with Actis and RSI, it becomes even more powerful. And when they all agree, when they all agree, it's almost impossible to go wrong, uh, at least with 3x leverage. So uh, let's look here. Uh, price went up, but here, price went, uh, OBV went down. Funny thing about OVV, OBV doesn't work like RSI. OBV does not work like RSI. Oh, hey, look, RS, uh, OBV is down, but price is a little higher. So we're bullish. No, we're not. No, we're not. Uh, OBV is, works the reverse of RSI, although, um, although the, um, although the divergences work the same. Uh, this is how you use OBV. You trace, you trace, um, you can almost use a center line. You can almost use a center line and say, um, hmm, how would I, how would I describe this? Look, uh, you, you do it this way. Price is higher. Okay. Price is higher. Uh, but on OBV, this corresponds to this. And then this price corresponds to this moment right now. So price is higher, but these price, this is lower. So what's happening is if price is higher, then there should be more volume to accommodate the price, but there's not. So you, you do this price is higher. Good. Uh, but OBV is lower. That's how you measure that. And that's not bullish. It's bearish. It kind of sucks that they both start start with B. Anyway, that's how you measure um, OBV uh, divergence. Let's uh, let's look a little bigger. So instead of just looking at this section, let's look at this whole section here. Um, so here, price went up higher. Uh, <clears throat> here, price did go up. Except it's still, uh, so, so you can't really do much of an OBV comparison here. Um, but you can with this. Uh, this is a little, this is kind of subjective, so I don't like it. I don't like doing subject, subjective stuff, but I'll do it anyway. Look, the ratio from here to here, the price difference from here, here to here, if you look at, if you actually do the multiplication and you take this price point and you take this price point, and you divide uh, the two together, you'll get a ratio, right? But if you take this height and you take this height, this ratio is going to be greater. This ratio is going to be greater. So there's a sudden a volume drop off here is what this is uh, telling us. Uh, so so th there's another divergence here. It's the same direction, except the angle matters here. Uh, let me put this to you this way. This is not nearly as steep as this. So this is an accelerating cell. But you could say, well, isn't that like super uh, subjective? Because couldn't you just do this and make the angle smaller? Yeah, you can make the angle smaller doing this. So what you'd actually have to do is just, just if you want to use this method, you would actually have to take these numbers here 
and actually use a calculator. Use a calculator, take this number here, take this number here, or you could just go do it easily and just eyeball it. Eyeballing is faster. Otherwise, you'd have to calculate everything and input everything. It's 68K uh, versus minus 80K. You, you see, it's kind of a pain in the ass. Uh, this is why artificial intelligence wins and beats humans every time because the, uh, because the um, math is instant. Anyway, so let's look at uh, the past real quick just to confirm, uh, just to show you an easier uh, comparison with OBV. <sighs> okay. Here, if you look at um, now, here's another good. Uh, here's another good one. Price difference for these highs wasn't that much, but all of a sudden volume dropped off. Doof, a lot. So that's how you do um, OBV variousness. Even even if OBV divergence, even if they're the same direction, they're both slanted downwards, both slanted downwards, uh, doesn't matter. You're looking for accelerating um, uh, indicators, uh, such as the drop off in volume. So here's, oh, this is a good way to look at it. You take the price, here's, here's price, here's price, much higher, right? Price is much higher, but here you look at this OBV and this OBV, it's the same. So this is bad. If this were RSI, if this were RSI, this is like, meh, it could be bearish, it could be not bearish. It doesn't, mm, uh, you don't uh, put much credence into it. But when it comes to multiplied by volume, because this is multiplicative, uh, this has a lot more power. Um, what's the symbol for power? I forget the Greek symbol for power. Anyway. Uh, this just has a lot more power. If this was like this, this should have been much higher, but it's not. It's more flat. So uh, you want to give these situations a lot more um, attention. Uh, finally, oh, finally, let's do this pump here. Uh, same. Uh, price dropped, but volume didn't. Volume's like just trudging on. It's just constantly staying the same. So it's eventually going to buy up all the all the dumping and and pump up, is what this says because it's stable. And this is stable. OBV was not rocked by price dumping and sliding. Is how you look at that. Um, anything else I need to tell you? Okay. <sighs> Looks like so. What what's the verdict right now? Um, Verdict looks like this is what's going to happen uh, because we got mixed messages. We got a bullish RSI with a, let's see what accumulation distribution is telling us. Accumulation distribution is telling us here, we've already got a, a volume uh, rejection up there on the lower high. Volume rejection on the lower high means that we're starting to sell off right now. Um, and we've got a bearish divergence on OBV. So it looks like, and if you look at uh, what the candles are doing now, now to go into 300x and 400x, 500x leverage, now you have to zoom into the um, one minute candles. And see what's happening here. On the one minute candles, um, looks like this is reasonable. And I'm not even looking at order books because they can be spoofed. I hate people that uh, measure order books and because um, it's just it's just kind of stupid. It can be gamed. Uh, and if you look at the open interest, a lot of people trade with open interest. That can be gamed too. And there's no there's no urgency to the open interest. Uh, just because open interest is high it doesn't mean it's going to crash right now. It could take a week. And you're not going to trade leverage over a week. That means you're not going to be able to sleep for a week, which is just stupid. You're ruining your health. It's not worth it. So if it's not, it's, if it's, the only thing that can't be gamed is the past. But even that's gameable because I've seen um, uh, TradingView uh, fake candles before. 
you've seen it too, right? You've seen fake candles and then suddenly after you, you're you done with the trade and you lose money, the candle just disappears. What was that? Yeah, it's fake data. It's it's um, So even in a world where even candles can be faked and nobody knows about it, it's like, uh, okay, so this is what's possible. This is what it looks like is happening. If you look historically at what happened, uh, we this is our second triangle, and it's a larger triangle. First triangle, what happened was, this has to be absolutely precise, absolutely precise. First triangle, um, we didn't make contact here. Uh, we failed to make contact, so uh, we failed to get continuation. We're not going to go up if... Uh, in order to uh, cross this green line, it kind of makes sense that you would have to at least touch it before you cross it, right? It's like before you go get a girl pregnant, you should at least touch her, make physical contact once. That's kind of, and it, this thing never even touched here. Uh, so we're going to go down. We went down. But funny thing is, you see these two points here and these points that aren't touching. We also created a bigger triangle. This triangle was down. And now we have a bigger triangle. Uh, generally speaking, when the first triangle fails, the second triangle succeeds. So, and since we've got a bullish RSI on the one hour, which is uh, more urgent than OBV or accumulation distribution on the one hour, uh, you didn't know that, did you? Uh, what happens first? RSI generally happens first. As long as, of course, there's no urgent deadline, which there is, um, so it, it makes this particular trade kind of a high-risk trade. Not everything's aligning. What you want to do is see everything align. You want to see bearish patterns, bearish indicators, uh, and bullish news. And you want to see Jim Cramer bullish. And you want to see Crypto Rover bullish. And you want to see uh, Samson Mao bullish. If all those guys are bullish and all the technicals are bearish, then it's a safe trade. You can go 100x all in, sell your house, sell your kidneys, and you'd make a ton of money. But in this case, because there's con conflicting stuff, you don't want to go all in with big money. So, uh, but generally speaking, what ends up happening is, since we have one triangle and we dipped and we have a bigger triangle, it's just bigger support. It just went lower and it was still triangling and we're at the bottom of this triangle and uh, we have formed a really nice Gartley. See this beautiful Gartley pattern? Do, 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 do. Gartley patterns at least go back up to the 618. So if this is 5, this is 382, and this is the 786, it goes up to 618. So it would make sense to go up about this high. So once again, we would go kind of try and retest the bottom of this triangle. And then look like, look like we have an inverse head and shoulders. Look like we have some kind of multiple taps uh, against um, uh, resistance and then to lower uh, and then I'm, I'm thinking uh, within the next 24 hours um, we should get another pump just because of the January 10th nonsense but I say January 10th nonsense because um, that's just for the ARC ETF did you know that the Black ARC ETF is on March fifth or something it's like three months away same with uh franklin templeton franklin templeton i think is in april it's like four months away uh so with all these etfs so many months away um why is everyone thinking that january 10th is the big deal it's because all the media outlets are saying saying so and we believe the media right we believe everything the media says right because the media is out there to make us rich and make us happy and uh, to sacrifice themselves for our long-term well-being, right? That's what Rupert Murdoch and that's what uh, um, uh, Walt, Walt, what's his name? Uh, not Walter. Um, Michael Bloomberg. That's their mission is to make us hardworking people happy and successful. So we have to believe everything the media says, right? <sighs> anyway. I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if this thing just, but you know what it also looks like? I'm expecting this worst case scenario and then this. 
but I don't see any, I don't see any perfect uh, multi attempts, just strong attempts that go boom, 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 boom. I don't see any of that happening. Uh, if, if I were to draw a line anywhere, look, if I were to draw a line anywhere, um, none of these lines actually connect to each other. There, there's, there's no trend, there's no bullish intent trend. So if you look here, there's literally only one touch and another touch. What is that? What do you call that when uh, there's a line and there's only one touch and then two touches? And then it's lower? And then there's another line? And then there's one touch and then there's two touches? And then there's another line and then there's one touch and then there's two touches? And then there's another line and then it's a parabola. So we could be looking at, since this isn't making any linear sense whatsoever, we could be looking at something like this. But we're going to know if that's a fact or not just uh, within minutes, literally within minutes, because within minutes we're going to be able to see uh, uh, whether we have, oops, whether we create two, with, probably within seconds. We're going to see if we create a couple touches breaking an arc. An arc would not allow. Uh, you know the definition of an arc, right? A, um, the definition of an arc and the tangent. If you don't know the definition of an arc or, or a tangent, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and explain it to you, because um, that'd be a waste of. If you didn't pay attention when you were in the seventh grade or the sixth grade, um, in Korea you learn what an arc and a tangent is in, in the third grade or the second grade or something. But I think in, in England and America and Canada, you learn in, in the seventh or eighth grade, then I, I'm, I'm not going to cover that for you. Anyway, if you want to make money just and you don't know what a, the definition of a tangent is, look it up because it's important for you to make money uh, with technical analysis. Uh, yeah, it looks like we're running out of power, but still, I'm not going to hold out the possibility that I could get surprised. You can do one of these things and go boink and break my parabola. And then, doof. Or something else totally different might happen. We might actually be building a parabola this way. So I'm also not going to, because there's just no... Anyway, I've, I've repeated myself. Um, but for now, RSI says up and uh, accumulation distribution OBV both say down. So logical thing is since RSI generally takes precedence, I wouldn't be surprised to see up first and then down later um, and all within the next couple hours. Ta-da! Uh, now that I've explained all this to you, if you don't want to buy um, 18 monitors like I've got all around me, I've literally got this exact same setup except uh, more monitors on the other side of my office here. Um, that's how many monitors you need to watch all this stuff because uh, you're looking for divergences and then you're looking for you're looking at uh, the futures markets and then you're looking at the dollar market and then you're also looking at uh, sudden treasury differences uh, news uh, interest rate news you're looking at Bloomberg terminals you've got all this stuff that you have to you have to see to get a two or three minute advance notice if you don't want to do this yourself just hire us to do it Go to bitcoin-fund-manager.com um, and hell, if you have one Bitcoin, we'll take it. We'll trade it for you. But we won't take it. You keep it in Binance. You keep it in Bybit and we just uh, remote control trade it for you. We cannot withdraw. It's secure. It stays in your account. All we do is we trade using API permissions to buy and sell only. Uh, we have no permissions to withdraw. So uh, that's uh, bitcoin-fund-manager.com. Bitcoin Fund Manager dot com with dashes and if you want to if you don't have a whole bitcoin that you can entrust for us to trade for you and you want to trade yourself and you just want to know what we're whether we're buying or selling for clients because we'll tell you i will tell you that we just shorted for clients or i will tell you whether we just longed for clients and what percentage uh, of our clients equity we used uh, if this is a no-brainer 
high high safety high reward thing will just go 50 percent or even all in sometimes uh or if this is a high reward trade but it's also a high risk trade we might only use five percent equity of uh the money we're trading for clients i'll tell you exactly every single trade if you go to kofi.com ko-fi.com slash OTC underscore Bitcoin, which is also our Twitter. ko-fi, that stands for korean-finance.com slash OTC underscore Bitcoin. Let's get you rich, guys.